Hello and welcome to Curious Ones podcast by Andara. I'm Yael Ginsberg, the host of the podcast, a yoga and meditation teacher and philosophy lover. Each week you will hear eye-opening interviews with the different teachers of the Andara Yoga Institute located in beautiful Baja, Mexico, along with other teachers that pass through here. This life-changing knowledge shared through authentic, heartfelt communication will help you live a happier, more fulfilled, and connected life. Let's dive in. You mentioned calling in a higher power, and I that kind of piqued my interest. I would love to hear what you meant by that. Yeah. Right. And this is the part where everybody has a different relationship, if at all, with God, spirit, universe, angels, guides. You know, we all have our own way and beliefs about that, and that's all fine. It doesn't matter. You know, so... But I believe, I believe in something much bigger than us. And I believe within us, we are that. We are connected and as we are connected to this higher power, however you want to define it, God, spirit, universe, whatever. So, you know, it's like crown chakra, you know, our connection, our gateway to that higher consciousness is what we have access to. 24 seven. And so when I work with clients, when I lead retreats and do these workshops, when I'm teaching this course, this upcoming course at Andara, you know, when, you know, within myself and my daily practice, it's really important for me. And what I do with clients is connect to this higher process, to this higher power. And so With clients, you know, in the beginning of a session, you know, we'll talk a little bit about what's happening for them, but then we'll go right into calling, I call it the centering process or calling in the light. And within that light is this higher power. And we can also relate to it as our higher self, right? Because our higher self is divine. There's no duality in our higher self. There's no duality in love, pure, unconditional, compassionate, loving. There's no duality. So we tune into that. And so we'll do a centering process. And I do that on my own. I have my yoga mat right here. Every day I wake up, I sit on it. And sometimes my process is a few minutes. Sometimes it's a really long time. It just depends to, on the degree of my upset. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and it's available to all of us. So this is what I teach. And it's, a, it's you know, it may even be the most powerful part of the work. Hundred percent. So I'd love to hear from you about what is your relationship for your own life with the higher parts of yourself or higher parts of consciousness. Yeah, it's a great question. And I want to start by saying for a long time, I was very confused by it. I didn't know if I really believed in God. I didn't really fully understand what it meant. I didn't understand the spiritual journey or even what universal consciousness was, you know? And so, and when I didn't understand, I was in a very, very stuck place, very confused. And this is only like 12, 15 years ago when I was in the corporate world doing my thing and, you know, on the goal line and kept butting up against, but I would always have this curiosity about something bigger than myself and each other. And so I learned, you know, over time to develop a relationship a greater, deeper relationship with myself and trusting that I have a higher self, that I am a divine being having a human experience and that there is a God and that there, and, and not, and I'm not saying you or anybody has to believe that, but I do, you know, and believe that there is this infinite, the vast space and experience maybe even beyond us, bigger than us, that is at, play. And so it's interesting because I did, because I grew up, you know, Christian and, you know, raised Roman Catholic and, you know, all the guilt and all the things that came with that. And I'm not against it because I actually do truly believe that 
people can really find their way through whatever religion, you know, that they're in. Um, but I chose a different path, you know, and I, um, I didn't do it consciously and I didn't do it intentionally. I just know that even as a young child, I questioned if my religion was the only way. And it's actually now that I'm thinking about it, you would appreciate this. When I, because I moved a lot when I was young. Um, and when I was in sixth grade, I moved to Long Island. So I was born in the Bronx, moved to Houston, Texas for six years. And then when I was 11, moved back to Long Island, New York. And the town that I grew up with was probably about 40 to 50% Jewish. Hmm. Like, and that's rare because, you know, the overall population is much smaller. So when I was in sixth grade, I remember when kids were introducing themselves to me and going off on a tangent, but I'll come back, right? It's like, they're like, oh, hi, my name is Allison. Are you Jewish or Catholic? Are you Jewish or Catholic? All day long, it's like, are you Jewish or Catholic? And I didn't know what Jewish was, you know? It's like, I didn't know, you know? But I knew I was learning on my first day of school when I'm nervous and young and I want to make friends that this is important, right? And I didn't know why. And I remember going back to my mom after school one day and saying, what does it mean to be Jewish and why is it so important? And she's like, well, and mother, my mother's educated. So she's like, she told me what being Jewish was. And she said, it's not important. One isn't better than the other. Mm, I love that answer. But even as a child, even though my mother said that, I thought it was better to be Jewish. So here I am confused about religion, but I'm like, oh, because like there were cool kids that were Jewish. And I just, it was just, I just, I think I just had this experience younger as a very young person where I was like questioning religion. I was questioning God. What does it really mean? You know, because I remember even to one of the girls who said, are you Jewish or Catholic? I said Catholic because I didn't know. And then to her, I said, what are you? And she said, I'm Jewish. And I said, do you believe in God? Like I didn't, I didn't know. So my point is, I think at a very young age, I was just curious, but I didn't have the answers. And as I got older and I was stuck in my career, because I was in the corporate world for 18 years before I started, before I went back to school to get my master's in spiritual psychology and start over to where I am now. Hence, you know, fast forward 12 years later. But I was at, when I was at the end of my time in the corporate world, again, I was very stuck and I was questioning. And I had heard about the school where I could get my master's degree in spiritual psychology. And that there was a part of me that really, really wanted to do it. But there was another part of me that was very afraid. I was afraid of what I would discover. So this is going back to your question, why are people afraid and kind of bypass, right? I was afraid of my own power. I was afraid of what I might discover about myself. And I was afraid of what my family would think if I went to school for spiritual psychology, you know, and it was in California, right? So then it's like, am I going to move to California? do that right now. So it was like, there was so much fear that came up, but like you with your belief and your intention to do something really amazing with this podcast, right? Your belief and your intention was pow more powerful than your fear because you overcame your fear. And I did the same thing. My belief in doing, because I also wanted to do more meaningful work in the world. And I was thinking about being a coach at the time. And it's like, I remember like, I wanted that. And I had the fear playing out. Will I make enough money? Will, what will my family think? How am I going to do this? Can I really move to Los Angeles? You know, so it's like I was, all that fear was present. But ultimately, my belief and my trust in myself and what this is got stronger. And then once you build and practice your higher self, your higher consciousness, living from love, your connection to the divine, your connection to the God, whatever it is you want to call it, when we practice that inner muscle, that inner, that inner wiring, when we, when we practice, we are building an inner wiring in our brains, actually, there's scientific evidence to back this up, that is, you know, this, this lighter and brighter way of holding and carrying it, then that older voice, the weaker parts, the smaller parts begin to lessen and disintegrate and go away. Does that make sense? It and, totally and so makes sense. I, I practiced, I went to school, and then I just began to trust more and more over and over, over time. Mm. It totally makes sense. And you speak to a 
like an issue that everybody experiences because you feel this calling of your soul. You feel this need or this desire to do something that might be different than what you were taught was the right thing to do or what you even thought would be your life journey. And there is this like stage in the process of this internal conflict that you try to negotiate with yourself like hey this is what mm -hmm. I want but but you know you have so many resistance mm -hmm. to it, so much resistance to it and so many voices in your mind telling you why that's not what you should do oh my god did I have them I was that year that I left the corporate world right it's like um you know, I left and I thought, oh, I'm, I've never taken time off. I've worked since I was 14 years old. I've always been, I've always worked hard, you know, and I thought, okay, I'm going to take three months off for the first time. It turned into a year because I went to Nepal and I got a lot from that experience. And then I, and then I decided to go to school for spiritual psychology. But that whole year, even though I was on the cusp of a change that in some way I believed in, like I believed that there was something there. I wasn't, if I could go back and do it over, I would just get more clear on my intention, but I didn't know what that meant then. But I was living in what you were just describing. I was both simultaneously seeing and trusting what I wanted my career and my life to evolve into and also grow in, from the inside out. But then that voice, those voices of my ego, my smaller self that were saying very clearly, you might fail. What will people think of you, your family? And my family was saying it, like, what are you doing? What do you mean? You know, why did you give up a career making over, you know, this much money? You know, it's like I was doing very well. And then that fear was coming up in other ways. Like, will I ever make enough money? Do I really need that much money? You know, do I, you know, it's like, I mean, I mean, it was an endless, will I lose all my friends if I go on this spiritual journey? Will I be boring? Like, I really actually had those thoughts. You know, it's like, it was crazy. Well, I become a boring person then, you know, it's like, and it's, um, I had to, I had to meet the parts of myself that were living in all the fear, all those voices. And I had to listen to them and I had to discern what was true, what wasn't true. And I had to develop a new relationship within myself so that I could be and live with more trust and knowing. And I did that through the practices that I now teach. And I also did that by, to your other question, building and enhancing my relationship with fill in the blank. I'll call it God, but somebody could call it the universe. I built and I'm still working on, I'm still evolving, you know, still enhancing and deepening into that relationship. But it has been a journey. You know, so many people say, how did you get the career that you do now? How do you lead these retreats? How do you do this? How do you do that? And it's like with clear intention and then trust that came over time. You know, it's like, but I had to do my work. Yeah. And even now at Yandara in this new role, I'm, I'm tested again and again mm. and again. And I have to keep meeting myself and, and keep rising up and remembering that I And they and everybody here are essential nature as well. That's beautiful. And I think that, you know, you and I have the feeling that we need to kind of put caveats on like when before we say God or we say universe mm -hmm. or, or something spiritual. But we speak about it with such certainty because I, I really resonate with what you said. For me, it was the point where my life changed, where I started from living in total uncertainty, total disconnect, total unfulfillment. And I was also like, I had a good job. I, it's like the, on the external point of view, everything was good, but On the internal point of view, I felt completely disconnected. And this connection to something higher was the turning point of my life. When I realized that there's a world beyond what we can see and 
touch. And so I don't think that, especially for this audience, like I don't think that there is a need to to even like shy away from speaking about it freely because it's not an assumption. It's not um, like a spiritual woo stuff. It's a it's a deep and meaningful knowing and connection to something that is the source of life. It is the the source of of everything that we're experiencing in this moment. And I don't think I've ever spoken about it in such an unapologetic uh, unapologetic mm. way. But I feel like we we need to stop like putting um um like a warning before like this is how I feel, but you don't have to relate to it. Like, you know? Yeah. You know? Thank you for pointing that out. Cause I probably am still doing it to some degree. Right. It's like, and, and we don't have to apologize. You're right. So thank you. All, I think all of us yeah. say this because everybody, because God ha- is like such a loaded word, you know, mm-hmm. it, it has all the connotation from religion and, everything that religion is from all the different religions that there are and people who believe in it, people who don't believe in it. Like everybody has a relationship to this concept of God, but speaking about the energetic world that is, is now like very much scientifically proven and speaking about um, our certainty in the connection to something that is beyond our understanding Mm -hmm. in whatever word you use, I think it has been and still is one, as you said, that I feel like we should uh, speak about it in a, (laughs) give it its its place, you know? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because you know what? I'm so glad you're bringing this up because It's the solution. I believe. You know, there's um, all kinds of courses people can take to learn about themselves, right? Like there's all kinds of modalities and trainings you can do. And in some of them, they'll, they'll, because, you know, a lot, a lot, we have many aspects to our lives. You know, we have our relationship with God. We have our relationship, if, if it exists at all, we have our relationship with our family, our friends, money, you know, finances, our home, you know, we have all these spokes on the wheel, right? And it's like, not that it's a contest, but what is the most important aspect, parts of ourselves, right? And like, what is that most important relationship? And People will have, many will have a different opinion of this. But for me, what I am, have been evolving into learning and truly not just from my mind, in my soul and in my heart, is that it's my relationship with God. And Yael, that may be the first time I said that out loud without a condition. So thank you. Wow. I, I thank you. I feel like, I feel like for me also, it's, it's a recognition that is maybe hard to, to speak about because of, we know like what the responses can be. (laughs) Yeah. And when I hear that, I think, or at least this is how I hold it. Right. So as I was saying, we're all on, we we do live in a physical world where things are happening. Right. And we all, there's nothing wrong with having goals and going this way because like there's goals, you know, we're, you know, from zero to 10, we either we're somewhere on the goal line of achieving our goal and whatever that thing is. Right. And we're on that learning line. You know, as I was saying, it's like, I'm going up and down my body because you could even apply it to the chakras. You know, we're just learning and we have our energy and thoughts and feelings as we're learning. But beyond this physical form of a vessel that I am in and you are in and we all are in, if we choose and I choose to believe that I am at my core divine love or I am a soul having a human experience, if 
I am a soul, what does that mean? What does that mean is to me is that I am pure, unconditional loving at my core. There's no duality in that place. There's duality in our humanness, right? In our human condition, we have duality of light and dark, right and wrong. We have these thoughts, right? But in the soul consciousness, in this higher consciousness, there is, there is, it's unconditional loving. It is compassion. It is abundance and joy and trust, right? It's our highest, highest, highest qualities. And when we learn how to live from those qualities. Yes. yes. Everything else gets smaller. And all the upset gets smaller. And everything starts right? to align. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a practice. Again, there's no duality. You know, in this higher place is our original innocence before we learned the things that aren't true about ourselves and the world and each other. Yeah. And it's so beautiful to have a practice, whatever that practice is, that takes us back up to that place of peace, right? It's like of our essential nature as love. It is so, I mean, it's not, it's like peaceful when you're in that space. Because when we're really in the light of that, no amount of darkness can take over that. You know, darkness cannot drown out light. Only light can drown out darkness. Martin Luther King has a quote there somewhere, right? I don't know, I'm going to mess it up if I try to say it, right? But like the essence of it is darkness cannot drown out light. Only light can drown out darkness. There's, um, you can even kind of see it in the law of physics. I'm not a science person, so forgive me if I say this wrong, but it's like, if you're in, I used this with a client recently, it just came to me, I'm making it, I made it up. Um, <laughs> if you're in a dark room, right? Pitch black, dark, no windows. And outside it's light out, right? But you can't see that because you're it's completely sealed off. But if you open that door, even a crack, the light will start to flood in because that light is so powerful and you don't even have to open it that much before that light is, that room is getting lighter and lighter. Right? Yeah. But now pretend you're in a light room. You're in a light, you're in a room filled with light and outside of that room is darkness. When you open the door, is the dark going to flood out the light? It can't. So our own darkness, our own smaller parts of ourselves cannot drown out our light unless we let it. Oh my but God. But we do let it, un we let it unconsciously. We don't mean to. That was so powerful and such an incredible and precise analogy the light just a little crack of light completely light like i can see it in my in my eye like i see the light shining in and yet the if i would now open the door here it's dark outside where i am it it would not make the room darker at all Wow. Light is much more powerful. Thank you so much yes. for that message. And, and remember that within yourself, especially now. Hmm. Because it goes back to your question, how do I be with these people, whether it's in your own country or what you're hearing on the news? It's like, keep remembering to shine the light that you already are. Yeah, yeah, you chose this path for a reason. And I don't mean just the podcast. I mean, you chose it before you even got to Yandara. Keep choosing yourself and the light that you know that you are, because you are, we all are, and you are shining yours, 
even in a time where you are, you have legitimate reason to fall back into upset. Everybody listening, that message was for everyone. I feel like everybody needed to hear that message so much and everybody, especially the people listening to our podcast, are light workers. And the importance of shining our light, especially in the light, in the face of darkness, is our purpose in life. Yes. yes, especially in the face of darkness, in the face of adversity. It's I'm not saying it's not easy at times. But our work is to rise up and remember that. Mm. I wanted to ask you about what a, what about people who don't know what their purpose is, what people who don't know who they are and what they're meant to do. But it, it feels it feels connected to what you're saying. Maybe you can connect it verbally for us. I, I get asked this question all the time, and. It's like, I'm going to try and answer it the best way I know how, and I'm going to direct you and whoever's listening to a resource. Hmm. There's somebody who speaks about this, I think, beautifully. I believe that purpose for most people is a knowing that they have inside. Like, it's part of our IntelliKey. We're all here. Right? Have you heard of IntelliKey? You know, there's some. No. Um, okay. Well, so it's like there's there's an, a natural wisdom in this earth, on this in this world. Like an acorn knows to become an oak tree, right? It's like yeah. we inherently, no matter what culture we're in, it's like we smile when we're happy, we tears come out. It's like there's and then and it's like that's not always IntelliKey. That's just divine order. But I truly believe that we are all here for a purpose right? We have a purpose. And for some people, it's clear early on in their lives in the form of a career. But sometimes we define or assign purpose as a career that I'm supposed to be doing something, right? And mm -hmm. for some, that may be true. But for some people, their purpose might not be a goal. It may simply be a way of being. Mm -hmm. It may simply be being a, a mother or a grandmother, like my grandmother was so loved. Like she didn't go to school past the ninth grade. Like her mother died when she was nine, like no money. Like it was just, but she was a mother and a grandmother. And that clearly was her purpose to love and to cook Italian food for Italian family, cook and feed her children, like grandchildren and food, like and her red wine. That was it. That's how she, that was her purpose, <laughs> right? So our purpose is shown to us over time, I believe. And again, for some, they know their purpose early on and some they don't. And this is where I'm going to direct to a resource that could explain it better than me. I believe when people don't know their purpose and feel like they're stuck, the answer is, and it's not an exact clear answer, but it's follow your curiosity. Follow the thing or things, it could be plural, that light you up. Follow the things that make you smile. And do that. And, and simultaneously trust, work on the inner work. Maybe it's a relationship with God or whatever. It's like, and keep asking. Show me what is my next step in this thing that I love or this thing that I enjoy doing. I think the people who love their careers the most are the ones that love what they do and they just find a way to make a career out of it, right? And it's like, it might be obvious to some and it might not be, and that might be frustrating to people because somebody might say, well, I like cats, but what am I going to do with cats? You know, it's like, my favorite thing in the world is dogs, but what am I going to do? Maybe that's not my thing, you know? It's like, keep following the things that, that light you up 
And it might not be just one thing and it might surprise you. And don't be so attached to what you think it should be today because it could change. Hmm. Mine has changed over time. You know, when I decided to leave the corporate world, I knew I was going to go to school to be a coach, right? No, I knew I was going to go to school and I thought maybe I wanted to be a coach, but there was a part of me that was afraid of that. And then I'm like, oh, I like yoga. I'm going to follow yoga, right? And then I'm going to lead these retreats and I'm going to teach yoga and these workshops. But it turned out I didn't want to be a yoga teacher. So I have somebody else do the yoga on these retreats, but I love the coaching. And then even when I was in coaching, I thought I'd just be a life coach or I had to find the niche. And I was stuck in that for a long time until I got out of my own way and my own fear around calling myself a spiritual coach because I was so afraid of what people would think, right? Or that I wouldn't be good enough or whatever it was. It's so old now, but it's like, keep following your curiosity. Keep following your curiosity and keep practicing. And when something doesn't work, it doesn't mean that you failed. It means get back up and try another way. And sometimes that other way might be trying something new, a physical task, go to school, get a course, take a course. But sometimes it's just a matter of doing some inner work and trusting that you are on the right path and that you are exactly where you were meant to be at this time. My career that I've figured out right now, and do I even, because it's still changing, but my point is, I didn't trust. My, the biggest thing that held me back from getting here sooner was my lack of trust. Mm. So it's like, keep following your curiosity. And then the resource that I was going to reference is actually Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Mm. Right? So she does a lot of speaking courses, right? She, she does a lot of talks, you know, um, and she was doing a lot on finding your purpose until, and I don't want to tell the whole story, but she got some feedback from somebody that like, I don't know my purpose, right? And it was, it really struck Elizabeth Gilbert. So then she did another big speech called, I call it, I don't know if it has a name, but the, the hummingbird or the jackhammer. But it's an analogy really that she used to explain that some people know what they want early on. And they're the jackhammer. She's like, I knew I was a writer or, and I was a jackhammer at it, you know? And somebody, somebody might say, oh, I know I want to be an actress or a director or whatever. It's like, you can drill down and learn that. It doesn't mean that you're not challenged in that role because you very well will be, right? You still need to find ways to persevere. Just like you, you knew, okay, I want to do this podcast, right? And you believed and you trusted and you worked hard and you worked through all the diversity. But the people who don't have that clear answer and are still asking that question, it's like, then you're the hummingbird, right? The hummingbirds are beautiful because they're fluttering their wings really, really fast until they find that sweet thing and then they move on to the next thing. So that's a way of saying, keep following your curiosity until you find the thing or things. And maybe it's not the thing that you thought. And maybe it's not even a physical thing, but just keep trusting along the way. Does that answer it? Yes, 100%. And I think that it really connects to what we were speaking before about in that it is about following that curiosity, following what lights you up and being a voice of light in the world in, in whatever field that you're in. And, mm -hmm. and for me, that is being a light worker. If what lights you yes. up is, is, as you said, working with cats or, you know, everybody has their own thing that, that they get excited about. The, the last podcast interview um, that I did with a woman named Sigal, uh, she, she, sped, she spoke about a woman who was doing, I think, investment. I don't remember exactly. And then she kind of got her to speak about makeup in a way and then she got like so excited her face lit up and she started speaking about it in a different way and it's really about like letting go of all the fear that we have and all the misconception and letting that light guide the way that is when our lives our lives start to transform truly so true so true and we all have it we all have it we are born 
we are born to be here. We have an IntelliKey and, and it's unique for everybody. And so we could see it in people, like you said, when something lights you up, you can see it. You, I'm sure you see it when you talk to people a lot, right? It's like there's certain topics that light them up. You know, with I'm in a client, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for their words and their cues and their tone. And I see when something is lighting them up immediately. Mm. You know, so it's like, let's follow that. Wow. And love lights us up. Darkness and anger doesn't. So let's find a way to minimize that, to dissolve that, to resolve, dissolve, transform it into something useful and a purpose and lighter and more loving and compassionate. And for some people, that's their purpose. Okay? Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, Lena, I could uh, keep talking with you for hours mm -hmm. and we'll continue this conversation for sure. Yeah. Um, but just to kind of wrap up the conversation and continue in the same line, this is the Curious Ones podcast. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'll just ask you the last question. What are you curious about right now? Oh, 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 that is such a great question. On the outer side, in the physical world, I am curious about the bigger picture of what's happening in the world, but I'm most curious about Yandara, where I'm working now. You know, as I said, I started, you know, with the retreat, retreat business. Now I'm doing other things for them and working on some really exciting projects. I'm very curious um, about how this, myself in this role, you know, what's going to come of it because Yandara, you know, for those of you who don't know, it's, you know, it's a yoga school who's been here for 23 years. We're having our 20-year reunion in this location. Um, and it's this amazing place who, that has evolved, you know, on their goal line and soul line over the years. And magic happens, you know, and thousands of people have come through and graduated and changed their lives throughout the process. And so, you know, the world is changing. Business is changing, you know. So there's, you know, we're, we're now at a point where we're, stopping a bit and looking closely at what Yandara has been, its purpose, its mission, and keeping it alive and exploring, you know, just without changing the dynamic, because it will always be a yoga school or a retreat center, but yet how can we infuse it with more love? You know, how can we infuse it and bring more exciting offerings um, or just shifting the ones that we already have or just, you know, just, and then doing more philanthropic work in the community and, um, you know, outreach in new ways. And so, God, there's so many things on the horizon and Rome wasn't built in a day. So it's like one step at a time. I'm, wow, excited. I'm, I'm so curious. excited to see all the amazing things that you are going to do at Yandara, that Yandara is going to do as a spiritual center as a community center, as a yoga school, I cannot say enough how much I respect you, the school, the teachers, and how much I believe in the vision of what Yandara is and will be in the world. And I just hope that everybody who gets a chance, will go there either for a retreat or a training mm -hmm. or whatever they can because it is truly a magical, enlightened place in the world that was pivotal in my journey. And I mean, I, I just, I mentioned this to you before that one of my favorite things about the, uh, Yandara was that it was a place where I could connect with people on subjects that I, I find so interesting that I mm -hmm. couldn't necessarily find around me in my day-to-day -day life. So even just for that reason, I would mm -hmm. highly recommend people to, to go spend some time there. Yeah. Um, uh, and I can't wait to see you back here whenever that is. Yes. And and there's, yes, you're right. There's so many beautiful courses. It's not just yoga teacher training. There's all these different modules and different 
modalities. There's, you know, there's sound bath, there's breath work, meditation, Kundalini, there's, um, you know, spiritual life coaching. coaching. And we're doing this spiritual, yeah, yeah. Yes. We're doing this spiritual life coaching course for the first time and I'm teaching it and I'm super excited. Oh, I'm curious about that too. And, <laughs> um, yeah, and it's actually, you know, I'm teaching a lot of what we talked about today. You know, who are you? You know, what is it like to be, you know, what, you know, on the soul line and the goal line of life? You know, how do we navigate when we're navigating from love? You know, when we're rising up into remembering who we are, you know, and and then, you know, teaching all the concepts, you know, so many different concepts and practices and principles um, that I've learned, some from, many from spiritual psychology and some from not. You know, I've had other trainings you know, over the years. And so I am so excited to teach them. It's a nine day course. And um, yeah, whoever feels called. I highly I recommend it. <laughs> Lena, is there anything else that you would like to add that we should mention? Mm, I don't think so. Just that I just adore you. And I thank you for this time and doing what you do and I think in the beginning I, yeah I just acknowledged you I'm just proud and grateful and yeah well me I feel too. like yeah <laughs> really there's so much oh, so much. I wish I could reach through the screen and give you a hug I know I know I would mm -hmm. love to hug you right now I'm mm -hmm. hugging you all the way from across the world. <laughs> I know, I know. And I meant it. Reach out to me anytime you need support and some guidance on everything and sending. So I just, I think you feel that we've been connected, but just I keep sending you so much love. Thank you. I feel it very deeply. And I thank you for doing this with me, taking the time. I'm so happy we finally got to do it. And it was exactly the right moment. And I thank you for your deep, meaningful insight and wisdom. Thank you. Now, after this time to nurture your mind and your spirit, we invite you to take a moment to consider others. A kind wish might come to mind. Know that what we learn becomes more valuable when we apply it and share it with others. So share this episode on Instagram stories, tag Yandara and I, or share with a loved one so that more people can benefit from it. Our hope is that the search will lead you home to who you already are, to what was always there. We'll be back next week with more inspiration, honest conversation, and insight into the energetic world around us. Thank you for listening and watching.